I'm the director of the French Association of Orchestras, which is um, uh, the place to represent orchestras, hiring musicians with permanent contract. That is about uh, 30 organizations in all, and also 10 associate members. The French Association of Orchestras is, on one hand, the watchdog of the profession, which means undertaking researches and professional trainings. And on the other hand, a professional organization in charge of promoting and supporting the orchestras and classical music in more general terms. It means that uh, this uh, conducts, uh, lobby we conduct uh, lobbying actions. I'm also a member of the board of Culture Action Europe. The Culture Action Europe has more than uh, 100 members. They represent over 80,000 80, cultural actors in more than 14 different artistic disciplines. Culture Action Europe supports the role of arts and culture within the development of the European project. Our mission consists in influencing European politics so as to make culture more accessible within and beyond European borders. Culture Action Europe informs cultural actors about the role of the European Union, offers them a space so as to exchange and work on common ideas, and from a more practical point of view, allows to elaborate concrete proposals directed towards European decision makers. And at last, I'm the only French speaker here today, and you've probably noticed uh, where I come from. So the title of my lecture itself brings a question. Lobbying for culture, how self-confident do institutions needs to be, need to be? I've asked myself whether self-confident here means confidence or arrogance. Is it about asking oneself whether lobbying exists in the field of culture? Or is it just about asking oneself whether we are too polite and whether we thus have to question ourselves about our action? I won't settle on that, but the question will remain all along this lecture. So, why lobbying? Culture and music, the first. We are all aware of the difficulties of cultural politics nowadays. In a field where public financial support is the rule, we don't have much room for manoeuvre when both the state and local authorities have to cut budgets. The North American system in which private investors are a majority is obviously not more favorable nowadays. Nevertheless, it's an absolute necessity to convince both our public and private financial partners. We also have to cope with the weaknesses and difficulties peculiar to our field, which I can sum up in a few words very common to populist speeches. Culture is an expensive and trivial sector. We can also mention the impact of the real mutations of our societies where time has been accelerating, whereas music needs time to develop itself and be heard, and where entertainment business overcomes public culture more and more every day. In opposition with prevailing views, I'm not sure that the public in, it, in uh, the, the, the audience itself is in decline everywhere. Nevertheless, this is the global view we have of academic culture that is, that is declining, because it requires time, some education, and also because it doesn't always refer to images, which are more and more important today, and because it functions above all on a daily rhythm and not with many, many events. Culture and music represent intangible objects, the value of which only relies on, relies on humanistic principles that a brutal vision of the economy may consider totally useless. I more precisely think that the difficulties of evaluation in our sector are the consequences of this situation. In every case, society is changing, and this is a fact we have to deal with the best we can. Europe. Europe is not a finished product. It's a process, an entity in development. It is thus a fundamental territory of influence, since it is a financial source, and above all, because it represents the setting of history and culture of a continent. 
Without the bonds that unite us, our lives would simply be more complicated. Lobbying, if is, oh, lobbying is, for this reason, totally suitable for a genuine need within the world of culture, education and music. There's obviously no recipe, no formula, and when an organization or a country finds solutions, these never are universal. I'm not saying here that I can bring solutions either. I'll start and try to map out some essential rules that uh, all of you surely already have put in practice, and you spoke about that yesterday, I know. I'm going to suggest you to think over three main themes. The first one is shared reports and knowledge, to exchange ideas with mutual respect, and to find out proper, appropriate means of pressure and put them into action. I will then tell you about two uh, different experiences, the event Orchestre en Fête and uh, the campaign We Are More in Europe. So, to start about a few rules. First, sharing reports and knowledge. To establish reports together represents the first essential step and it's a lot more difficult than we would expect. To reflect and act together, whether this is done within an occasional or long-standing platform, is a necessary prerequisite. The network, this is made particularly obvious on, your, on the European level, as it helps to reinforce our structure in terms of information, for instance. Knowledge, to receive information from multiple sources, our daily activities don't always, don't always give, give us the time to get the information ourselves, but networks help us to get it and process it. To identify the subjects, what subjects do we feel we need to act upon? We need to define them precisely. There's no room for, for confusion here. For instance, should we be talking about musical education or awareness of music? And if, uh, yes, are we willing to train future professionals or to soften the ear of many? And if we think it's necessary to intervene in several issues, how should we articulate our requests without weakening them and without them to be in competition with each other? To specify what makes our subjects of intervention specific to our, to, to our sector? to evaluate, it allows us to focus on the essential. This ev evaluation must uh, be directed towards our ability to raise interest from our interlocutors with our proposals, and that is essential to be listened to. In that respect, we need to perfectly understand their own goals. Two, to exchange ideas. As said before, a solution can only be built around dialogue and sharing. We have to identify our partners and be open-minded. This again, you said it uh, yesterday evening. Dialogue and sharing between large and small institutions are necessary, between centralized and decentralized organizations, between different regions, between amateurs and professionals, etc. Dialogue and sharing between artistic disciplines, between professional sectors, between direct and indire indirect actors of the cultural world, etc. Culture is a wall. We know that the strongest ones will always remain the strongest, that they have no more chances to be listened to. The balance of power often is distorted. Walls always are stronger than people and thus venues always more visible than the artists themselves, even when these artists form a collective such as orchestras do. Though, when financial and human means become restricted, we often notice less willingness to join umbrella organizations on a national or European scale. We know that an accumulation of difficulties has consequences such as less energy, less imagin imagination, and less boldness. To establish partnerships doesn't mean to generate one single opinion. I want to state Socrates, know yourself by yourself. If we are conscious of our own goals, of the limits of our subjects of work, of what is essential, 
and what is of second importance in the pursuit of our goals, then it is possible to establish and develop successful partnerships. Even though, it's, uh, even though it is at time only possible to agree on the lowest common denominators. And last thing, to, to, in oh, to identify our interlocutors, this step is about individuals as well as um, about uh, institutions. It makes it possible to identify the decision makers. It is both a personal and institutional analysis. The knowledge of the places where decisions are taken within the European Union is a key, so is the knowledge of the persons. I'll come back to this later when talking about lobbying within uh, the European frame exclusively. Third, to find our appropriate means of pressure and put them into action. Towards whom shall we direct our action? We need to start with what is accessible before extending our target with the easiest to the more difficult. Other professional in the field of culture and other disciplines with whom we collaborate and with whom interdependent actions are possible. The audience we know and uh, yes, the audience we know, and to which we owe a very personal relationship when possible. Stay close to our friends and our subscribers and use some popular events. And always keep in mind the compromises it often implies. With its cultural choices, the public can have an influence on the political decisions. The decision makers, elected representatives and public administrations at central and regional levels. Patrons of the arts and sponsors, we are not only an instrument of promotion, we can seduce them by approaching them through their business interests and then drive them towards our personal interests. Medias, nothing is possible without them. We must keep in mind that the tendency goes towards specializations, the space attributed to culture in the non-specialized media in France is very low and mainly dedicated to popular events. So that's a problem. How to act? Never to neglect the little by little, step by step process. We won't be able to convince with solely our own, mainly self-referential arguments. But we can try and practice concentric cir circles. Some of our politicians have cultural appetites. It's up to those interested in culture to convince the ones involved with financial matters, for example. Up to those in charge of urbanism to think of the use of a concert hall in, in a city, for example, etc. We all know that. So, to Mm, I had a very good PowerPoint, and excuse me, I forgot <laughs> to use it. <laughs> it's very beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> it's just a, an exercise for memory. <laughs> the end. So, two practical experiences. <laughs> The first one, which is uh, Orchestre en Fête. Um, the event was created by the French Association of Orchestras in 2008, and our goal has remained the same since, to introduce and show the orchestra as it is, the profusion of its activity and its involvement with the public. We aim at raising interest from our financial partners, whether public or private ones, through the audience. So, the AFO collects a 10 days program of orchestral representations within a, within a period of time when there are no other events in competition, and that is over the last two weeks each November, in November each, each year. The program is set, up, is set up by ourselves around three main themes that have a political aspect and value. First, the concert themselves, obviously. Second, the actions within the educational frame. And third, all actions of mediation 
regardless of the audience involved in hospitals, for example, for the elderly people, in prisons, in isolated districts, etc., etc. Each year, we put into prospect the emerging aspects we have uh, been gathering, such as, for instance, the place of the 20th uh, century repertoire, the importance of creation, last year the place of women as orchestra conductors, or the actions undertaken with elementary schools, which was just the beginning in France, etc., etc. To finish with, an event to the attention of the general public is produced by the association itself, such as this year a flash mob in the Gare du Nord in Paris, and you can have a look on it on YouTube if you do flash mob, Gardiner, Paris. It was a great success, I must say. Our work consists in convincing all orchestras to take part, in looking for budgets, and in putting into action an appropriate communication program with a dedicated budget, even if, it's, if this budget is very low. Strong points. The event is now settled. It uh, helps us to have the recognition orchestras deserve regarding the diversity of their activities. And this has been made possible only thanks to the permanent musicians. It reinforces the co coherence of the network that the uh, French Association of Orchestras uh, represents. It also allows us to benefit from a stand to express ourselves. This year, for, in for instance, we stood out for an orchestra that might disappear because of some radical budget cuts from the Department of Culture and French Ministry. The involvement and participation of musicians has been increasing, and it goes hand, and hand in hand with their awareness about difficulties and national issues. Challenges still to take up, a much too low budget to plan a real communication program. Not enough, concert com not enough concern coming from the national medias and more specifically from the public television channels that are more interested in mainstream events, but also the withdrawal of some orchestra directors not sharing their day-to-day -day difficulties and the difficulty to get music directors to speak together. The campaign We Are More. This campaign was launched in 2010 by Culture Action Europe so as to influence the political negotiations that will lead to the adoption of the 2014-2020 European budget and thus to the future European budget dedicated to culture. Adding to this concrete lobbying action, the campaign also wants to contribute to and reinforce the recognition of the role of arts and culture in our European societies. In this respect, <clears throat> it has led Culture Action Europe and its members to develop their arguments in regards with art and culture. Beyond a specific action towards the European institu institutions, we are more thus appeals to increased budget for the culture at all levels, local, regional, national and European. Finally, we are more intense to promote all initiatives that encourage access to culture to all citizens. I can now come back to the essential rules of lobbying for culture on the European level. First, I have no PowerPoint. <laughs> Brussels is a very complex environment, asking for global strategies and individual contracts. It is the second only to Washington in its corporate lobbying culture, so cultural lobbyists have to make themselves visible and pertinent in a very competitive environment. Network of influence really matters, and advocacy actions for culture to be visible have to be developed in coalition with like-minded like -mind sectors defending the, public, the, the public interest and long-term investment in key development policy, policies such as education, territorial development, etc. The various institutions have different power and influence in different spheres. Culture supporters have to be identified in those institutions and approached with target, targeted uh, arguments. Two, Brussels is about process. 
The decision-making process is complex and the timing of intervention critical. Campaigns calendars are therefore to be designed very carefully and choices of actions are very important as the culture sector still has very reduced advocacy means and have to make the most of their limited power of action. Three, leverage, leverage national government. Decisions at EU level in the field of culture are still extremely dependent on member states and their final decisions in the Council. In addition to actions in Brussels oriented towards the European Commission and the European Parliament, a coalition of activists passing messages to their national governments is also of crucial importance. Media actions at national level also have to be carried out. All these means are solicited through the We Are More campaign. Contacts and negotiations are well underway with the European authorities. It's going through all levels all, uh, of all authorities. A working tool is made available on the ded dedicated website. It contains in several languages a petition that people can sign online, the flyers to introduce the campaign, as well as a short list of arguments and key messages. National coalitions are here to act as substitutes and thus relay all messages and campaign requests to governments of the member states. Strong points. The campaign We Are More is articulated around a specific political process turned towards a clear goal to secure a significant and quality support for culture over the seven years to come. It makes, it makes it possible to mobilize actors from all around uh, Europe who uh, would not understand the necessity to get involved in a European action that is too often perceived as distant from their immediate reality. This campaign thus permits a mobilization on a larger scale, the creation of new alliances, and the development of a common reflection on the arguments to use. The campaign has gained a solid recognition from the most important authorities, from the President of the Com Commission, the President of the Commissioner to Culture, as well as the President of the Cultural Commission within the European Parliament. Obviously, there are still challenges to take up, just three of them. First, at times it is easier to mobilize people on a distant project, Europe, than on a close one, their own country. Even if national coordination groups are developing and getting organized in some countries, national actions still are too limited. We must encourage our members to interpret and adapt the aims of the campaign in regards to the realities of their respective countries, as well as to implement their own action plan. The situation of crisis that we are getting through also requires a subtle reactivity and political analysis. It's difficult to coordinate all these requirements within such a large scale of action. Two, to look for symbolic and important person, famous in the eyes of many, to represent the campaign. This is not done. Three, to initiate budgets dedicated to the campaign and secure a long-term budget. Despite these difficulties, but also thanks to its strength and qualities, I think, the campaign We Are More has collected more than 25,000 signatures to this day, at a time when European decision makers are in the middle of their negotiations and when European decisions may change radically up to the last minute, we aim at gathering 100,000 signatures by the end of May. So, I hope I've been convincing enough for you to add yours. Thank you.